Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and we're back with another Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about getting footage into Media Composer via the Source Browser. Now, I want to thank you for tuning into this tutorial. Please, if you do like what you're seeing here, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. We are on our way to 9,000 subscribers. We're almost there. So I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and sharing this tutorial across your social channels. All right, so as you can see, we are an Avid Media Composer. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that one thing that I really like to do in Media Composer is to dive in and not only show you how things work, but explain to you why things work the way that they do inside of Media Composer. But for me, the most important thing to teach you right off the bat is how to get footage into Media Composer and how to get footage out of Media Composer. To be honest, we're not going to talk too much in this tutorial series about actually editing. And I will show you how to do it. But remember, everybody has their own edit style. So for me to tell you that mine is better than anybody else's is just ridiculous. The whole point of this is, is that I'm going to show you the tools and how they work. And you can then take that concept and you can run with it. So that's why I thought in this lesson, talking about the source browser and how to get footage into Media Composer would be a good next logical step. All right, so I'm actually just going to minimize Media Composer here. And what I have done okay. is I so have gone through and I have gotten uh, basically a clip for each one of our categories. This is it. some footage from well, Cine Study. I, I love Cine Study and I love the footage now. that they provide Things for absolutely well, free. I'm just going to bring the volume down here. Uh, I love the footage they provide that's absolutely free for learning purposes. What I encourage you to do is head to cinestudy.org. They've got some great legacy footage and they're working on new content that you'll be able to use for everything from multicams to interviews and all of that type of stuff. So I encourage you to check them out at cinestudy.org. Uh, I don't make a dime from sending you over there. I just think their resources are awesome. That's why I do it. Uh, then what I've done is I have a matte key element that you'll notice that inside of VLC doesn't even play properly, uh, which is fine because inside of Media Composer, you will see that it will actually play properly with no issues. I've got a still image of a Eurasian Lynx. And last but certainly not least, I have an audio clip, a uh, piece of music here. And what we're going to do is I've just stuck them on the desktop for now. Now, one thing that I do encourage you to do is to keep your footage organized as much inside of Media Composer as outside of Media Composer. We talk about inside of Media Composer having a folder called audio, called clips, called graphics, called sequences. I encourage you that at the desktop level to create folders called basically those main, well, basically audio clips and graphics. You don't need a folder called sequences, but basically a folder called graphics, clips, audio. In there, for example, with audio, break that down another step sound effects, voiceover, music. Inside of clips, you might have camera footage. You might have, uh, you know, interview clips. You might have, you, you understand what I'm talking about here as far as breaking your organization down this way. If you ever need to find something, what I always say is because I was an assistant editor before I was an editor, you know, if I had ever worked a night shift, came home, was asleep, someone called me, said, I need to find this clip. I didn't even need to think about it. I could just say, well, if you go into the, you know, in the project and the clips folder or in the audio folder, in the sound effects folder, I brought it in last night. It's probably called gunshot sound effect or, you know, doorbell ringing sound effect or something like that. If you keep yourself organized, you'll never have a problem finding stuff lightning quick. All right. So we're just going to bring everything into the clips folder for right now because we're only dealing with really four clips for right now, but we'll organize things as we go. What I'm going to do, right click on that bin, I'm going to navigate to input. You'll notice that we actually have two input options. One is import media, one is source browser. For the most part, we're actually never going to use import media. Now we will occasionally, and I'll talk about that in a later lesson when we would use that. But for the most part, it's really the source browser that we're going to be using. Now, the source browser can be used one of two ways, the quick way and the long way. Now I'm going to show you the long way to begin with and what we're basing this idea on is the fact that you don't know what footage you're working with. You don't know what you're going to want to bring in and you're going to want to possibly preview stuff before you bring it in to make sure you're bringing in just what you need. I'll be honest, for the most part, editors just kind of bring everything in and then deal with it when they're in Media Composer. But I want to make sure you understand how the source browser works. So what we're going to do is we're going to head on into the source browser. Now, the source browser is really divided into three main sections over here on the left, over here on the right, 
and down here at the bottom. Upper left represents our systems hierarchy. Basically, if we want to explore, you know, dive into one of our external drives to find footage, to find music, whatever we need. We have a favorites option. Obviously, if we have a specific folder that we're constantly bringing stuff in from, like for example, if we have a sound effects library, maybe we're bringing stuff in from that constantly. Great thing to have as a favorite. And obviously the recent folders that we have visited. Now on the right here, we have basically where we're going to select our clips even preview our clips from here, which I'll show you in just a second, and even search for clips if we needed to go that way. Maybe we have, you know, a thousand clips, sound effects clips in one bin. We need to search for something or in one folder, not necessarily a bin. We need to search for something. We can simply punch it in right here to search for it. And down here at the bottom, we have some source browser settings that we'll talk about in just a second. Now, this is fairly straightforward. I have a clip, let's just use our CineStudy mockumentary footage that I would like to bring into Media Composer. I'm simply going to select it. I'm going to navigate down here to link. Once I do that, you'll apparently see that nothing's happened. But what I'm going to do is just drag that source browser window slightly out of the way here. I'm also just going to bring it over here like such. And you'll now see, just give it a second here. There we go to move it out of the way. If I double click on that clip, that clip is now living in my bin. Now what I also have the ability to do, I'm just going to delete that clip from my bin, is I can actually preview clips directly from the source browser by simply double clicking on them right here. Now you'll notice that by me doing that, the clip hasn't appeared in the bin, but I can navigate through, simply hit the space bar. Oh, I uh, graduated college. To play and it. I, I needed an internship. And, and well, the clip is really good to go to preview whatever I might need to preview in this specific clip before I bring it in. Now you'll notice that down at the bottom, and I'm just going to sort of sidestep for a second, all right? We have some options because I double clicked on this clip to basically bring it up and preview it. So if you take a look down here at our source settings, the very first source settings options we have is what exactly is happening when we double click on a clip. You'll see it's going to load the clips into the source monitor, which is exactly what Media Composer did, or what it can do is to link or import. Now for me, I don't normally like to have a double click as link and import because my brain is associated double click and media composer with calling a clip up into the preview window or the source monitor. So for me, I like the functionality to stay the same inside the source browser as I do when I'm actually working. So let's move on over here to the right because you'll notice we have a couple more settings that I may as well just talk about so we can round out that discussion. Uh, you'll notice that Basically, after I link or import a clip, do I want it to have the source browser close right away? And do I want to clear the source monitor after closing the source browser? Meaning that if I double clicked on that clip and it's not in my bin and I close the source browser, will that clip disappear? Which is what it just did right there. Personally, for me, I prefer that workflow. I just find it to be a much more user-friendly idea. Um, now, you'll also see that, again, if I check this and I select my CineStudy and I say link, it's immediately going to close the source browser. Now, that's based on the idea that I've actually selected everything. And to be honest, I'm constantly going, oh, I forgot this clip or I forgot that clip. So I'm constantly bringing stuff in. So for me, that functionality doesn't really work. So I'm actually just going to deselect that but I will have it clear the source browser after bringing that clip in, all right? Now, let's navigate right back up here because to be honest, if we're only dealing with these four clips, I can simply just select them like such, say link, and we're basically set to go. You'll see that it did bring in that matte key element. There we go. It did bring in that music. It did bring in my mock footage or my mockumentary. And it did bring in my slightly stretched out image of a link. Now we're going to talk about the impacts of linking to footage that doesn't match the resolution of your project in an upcoming lesson. But I just want to draw your attention to the fact that these clips were brought in, everything is fine with them, and they're set to go. Now, I also want to draw your attention right up here to these clips. And I want to draw your attention to not only the icon that's associated with them here on the left, but the fact that there's a little link icon here. All right. So what these two icons here represent is master clips. What this clip here represents is audio. 
And what this clip icon here represents is that it is a matte key. Now you'll notice here that we've got the little link icon representing that all of these clips have been linked to. Now I'm going to give you probably the second most important lesson in Media Composer right now. Do not, under any circumstances, edit with linked media. Please do not do it. Media Composer was never designed to work like that. The whole purpose of the source browser and being able to link to media was in the switch from HD to larger than HD projects. It was a way for Media Composer editors to bring in clips that didn't match the raster dimension, basically in our case, 1920 by 1080, of the project that we're working on, but maybe we needed to work with 6K footage or 4K footage, and we needed to bring that footage in so that we could transcode it to a different resolution, in our case, HD. That was the purpose of the source browser and linking to media. It was never designed to be actually edited with. You start editing with that media, you might very well get to the end when you're ready to output your clips and Media Composer is going to throw up an error saying, whoop, there's an issue with this linked clip and uh, I'm not going to tell you really what the issue is. And you're then going to have to backtrack through all of the linked media to attempt to transcode it to figure out what's going on with a specific clip which could take you hours or even days worth of time. Please, please, please. Again, the second most important lesson I'll ever teach you, do not edit with linked media. All right. Now, here's a great little quick tip for you if you want to know what all of these different icons actually represent. Now, it's important that I'm going to show you this, but don't impact anything in this window, all right? What I'm going to do is navigate to the bin fast menu, and what I'm actually going to do is make sure nothing is selected before I do that. So I actually have the short menu, and what I want to do is select set bin display. Now, what this command is actually doing is telling Media Composer what you want to display in a bin. So don't actually change anything in here. We're going to talk more about bin display in a later lesson. But inside of the set bin display window, you're now going to see that it actually gives me all of the different icons. You'll see master clips, linked master clips, sub clips, sequences. Now you'll notice that audio is not in there, but I mean audio is obviously represented by the waveform, but this is a great way that you can actually get in and see what a lot of these different icons in your bin are actually going to mean. So you can get a little bit of a more in-depth understanding of what they are, what they do, and really how you're going to work with them in your timelines. All right. So I'm actually going to cancel out of that window just so that I don't impact anything that I see in my bin. And let's get back into the source browser to talk about a few more things. All right. What I'm going to do is just bring the source browser up a little bit here. We're just going to stretch it out because what I want to show you couple things in here. You'll notice that we're viewing everything in list view right now. So I can basically get a list idea. It's Sparks Matt. It's a you know cooking show music, mockumentary footage, but we might very well have camera footage in here where I have a hundred different clips. Maybe I only need to bring in, you know, a couple interview clips and a whole bunch of B-roll. So the question is, how are we going to go about actually having a visual representation of exactly what's going on here? Well, down here in the lower left-hand corner of the upper right window, you'll notice that we have these four little icons that represent frame view and frame view is fantastic not only because it gives us a visual representation of exactly what's going on with our clip but if i was to navigate over any one of the thumbnails you'll see that i can actually quickly preview these clips right here in the source browser now for the purposes of what we were doing it really didn't matter because i was basically just selecting everything and bringing them in but if you're in a situation where you are doing an interview about, I don't know, uh, you know, red cars that are driving down the street and you need B-roll of those red cars driving down the street. Well, this is a very fast way to get in and preview. Oh, okay, this is a red car driving down the street. Let me bring this clip in. Oh, this one's a red car driving down the street. Oh, this is a green car driving down the street. I don't need that one. So this is actually a very visual way that you can quickly get in and preview things to figure out exactly what you need lightning quick. Now, one other thing that I do just want to draw your attention to on a troubleshooting um, standpoint, which is you'll notice that with my clips here, they're all brought in minus the audio file with the UME, the Universal Media Engine Link Plugin. 
Now, there may be situations where you're trying to bring in an older QuickTime file and you're running into issues trying to bring it in. You do have the ability to change the plugin you use if for some reason that QuickTime clip won't come in. You can actually right click and go down to link with and change it over to QuickTime. So the legacy QuickTime uh, link method, you can actually choose that if you're having issues trying to bring that footage into Media Composer. All right, last but certainly not least, let's head right down here to this two little radio buttons here, the link and the import and the little cog wheel. Now what this actually represents is the settings for linking and the settings for importing. All right, now for the most part, we're gonna ignore this one for right now. What I'm gonna do is just close that, but I do wanna draw your attention to something inside of the link settings, which will be handy when dealing with elements that maybe have a matte channel, but don't have a matte key. Like for example, with the Sparks matte element, sometimes I might not wanna bring it in as an actual matte key. Maybe I just wanna bring it in as those sparks on black. The problem is every time I link to it, you'll see that it actually comes in with the matte key. I'm just gonna delete it for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on into my link settings. Now we're going to talk more about settings actually coming up, uh, maybe next lesson or the lesson after that. But what I want to draw your attention to right here is the link options. And you'll notice that right here we have the alpha channel options. And if I change this and I set this to ignore, it's actually going to ignore the alpha channel with that clip. So if I now bring in Sparks Matt and I say link, you'll now see that there is no matte element associated with it. It is simply a master clip that is now living in my bin. Now, last but certainly not least, down here at the bottom, the target bin, fairly self-explanatory. I only have the clips bin open, so I really only have access to it right now, but you'll see that we can actually create a new bin uh, based on the folder that we're bringing in or just create a new bin in general. If I happen to have more bins open, I would have the option to choose where I wanted all this stuff to go, but I'm only bringing in four clips. So I'm not going to overly worry about it. Okay, I think that's a good place to leave off. We've kind of gone in depth with the source browser, bringing footage in, troubleshooting things, what to do and what not to do with linked footage, and also getting in and talking about link settings. So in our next lesson, I think we're going to get in, we're going to talk about some settings because settings are exceptionally important. And after that, we're going to get in and talk about the most important setting of all, and that is your keyboard settings. All right, so I wanna say as I wrap this up, thank you very much for watching this tutorial and please, if you did like it, please like, subscribe and share this video across your social channels. We wanna get the word out there to people that are learning Media Composer, maybe people that are coming from Premiere or Result to do a project in Media Composer because I hope these tutorials will be beneficial for them to get them getting done what they need faster than ever. If you got any other questions that you might want answered, you can always feel free to send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.